Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today we're going to hook up the data to our simple flipbook. So let me remind you where we're at. We built this flipbook, and uh, the images are different on each page, but the same. So we want to actually switch that so that we're actually bringing in dynamic data. So let's go ahead and hook it up. Now I'm going to teach you something today, a technique that I use, which I call tracing a program. So you might be asking me, hey Mike, what is tracing a program? Well, tracing a program in Flash Builder is basically following its flow using the control plus roll over click trick. Okay? So I had a video up earlier called Essentials in uh, Shortcut Keys for Flash Builder. Make sure you watch that on YouTube. And we're going to basically just use one of those techniques today. So that shows you how powerful uh, shortcut keyboard commands are. So we have our program up here, the main program. And so I'm just going to hold down the control click. And I can see what this program does here is actually just brings in this first component. So I want to go to that component. So I hold down my control click key, control, roll over that, and click. And that takes me to all the code for that component. And now I want to modify that component because the data is hardwired right now. So let's come on down here and take a look at the components part. So right here are all my components right here. And what I want to do is I want to come along here. I'm interested in component 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The back cover and the front cover I'm not interested in right now. I will be later on as we move on with the appendix and the and the uh, table of contents, but for now, just getting the images in, I'm just interested in those components. So what I want to do is control, click, and hit that component. But first, let's talk about tracing a program. So I hit this component, and actually all the action is happening in this component. So I want to go to where creation complete is. There it is right there. So I just roll over and click. So when the program starts up, it, it brings in this module, and this module is started up by using this creation complete which was auto-generated. I click on that. It takes me to what happens first. So what happens first is this get my result dot token data, get my data is, and get my data is run. So what does that mean? I don't know. Let's control click on it. Okay, so here's this get my data results roll over. Click on that. And that takes me down to the call responder. Isn't that cool? And so what that's doing is running the call responder, grabbing all that data, and once the data is grabbed, it's going to run the following method get my data result underscore result handler so I need to know what's inside that because that's the program flow that's what runs next so I hold my control click key I click and it takes me to that method let's see what's happening so what's happening is once the data is got okay in a sense from that uh, last resort right there very important command right there so once that data is gotten in a sense I'm gonna throw it into my array collection that I created last time and now I have this array collection, and I can transfer it to all my different page components. Once it's pushed over to my page components, then I can decide what I want to view in that page. Okay? Let's take a look at those components. So at this point, I just roll down and find my components again. Where are those things? There they are. And let's just go to component one. So once again, control, click, roll over, see how powerful that is. Click on that, and I'm in a very simple component. What is this component? It's just an image. It's a group, you know, that sandwiches an image. Why a group? Because basically, groups have interactivity. When I click on them, something happens. Images don't. Bitmap image uh, a spark in the Spark architecture do not have interactivity. You click on them, nothing happens. So I sandwich it in a group, and all it does basically is brings in this little JPEG right here. That's all I get is a JPEG out of it. And I want to do more. I want that to happen dynamically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll over to a finished component and start cut and pasting code to show you how all that's done, just to speed things up a little bit. So here I have a finished image one component. Here it is. Very simple. First part is just a, an import array collection and then array collection for that particular component. Now what's going to happen here, of course, let's go ahead and copy that control C. Let's go back to my component right here and we're going to open this up a little bit and let's paste that code in. Control V. Very good. So what I've done, I've imported the array collection. Very good. That's my class I need. And I've created a, a bindable array. And that's called my image 01 is. And I'm going to stick my array collection that has all the data into that image into that my image 01 is array collection. Kind of a funny name, sorry about that. And I need to get rid of this embed bit and actually make it dynamic. So I'm going to concentrate on this right now, and then we'll do the caption next. So I'm going to go back to my code that's already created. Sorry about that. I just want to speed things up. And I'm going to copy this line. We're going to paste it in and discuss it. So control C to, to copy. And let's go back to uh, component when it's not completed. Excuse me. And let's paste it in. 
So what I'm doing here is basically I've got the name where the images are. It's assets underscore images, and that's in quotes. But then I'm going to bring my bindable array in here with my little parenthesis right here. There you go. And I'm going to bring in my thumb. So here's the business end of where everything's happening. I want to bring in that array collection, which I stick into component one, and go dot get my item at zero. That's the zeroth item dot thumb. Hey, come on now. What's going on here? Well, you've got to go back and you've got to look at the data. All right. So let's go back to the data. So there's two pieces of data we need to look at. First, the images data right here. That's where all my images are. Okay. That's why I need this assets underscore images. Okay. That's the first piece. Now, if you look at the data, here's the names. That's the next piece. But that, those names need to be kept somewhere. Where are those names coming from? Well, let's come take a look real quick here. If you open up data, there's my gallery. That's all the data that's being brought into the my collect. Let's click on that and take a look at it real quick. Open that up. There you go. And the first item, that's the zeroth item. And there's the thumb, dot thumb. That's where all that syntax comes in. Let's go back and take a look at it now that we know what that is. There's my image one. There's my assets. That's the data coming from the array collection. That's get item zero. And that's the dot thumb. That comes from the XML. Big, big deal. And all that is put into the source of the bitmap, so that's brought in dynamically. Now, we have one more thing to do. We need to take that array collection and stick it into what? The my image 01 is array collection. So let's go back and do that. So we need to go back to the original component, component 1, go to image 1, and do I see anything in there? No, no, I don't. But wait a second. If I go back to image 1, what have I done? I've created this new variable here. Look at that right there. It's a public variable. So it should appear in my component. So let's go back to uh, that code. And all I'm going to do is open it up and put a space. And now I'm going to have all this wonderful code hinting. Now, what did I call that? Well, let's go back and see what I called it. I called it my image 01. Let's go back to component. And one more thing you need to do is make sure you save this, OK? Because if you don't save it, it won't recognize that public variable. So now it's saved and once I go back to the component one I'll be able to bring that up. So once I hit that space bar I can start typing my and get that coding in, and there it is right there. And what do I want to do? I want to shove that array collection in. It was bindable so I can hit, a bind I can hit my curly brackets to do a bindable uh, thing. There you go. And just put my collect in there. Now I want to make sure that's the right name so if I save this it sees it. Now I have to control click. See, it rolls over. Oh, then I know it's right, and that's correct. Good. So I should be able to run this now, and should be able to bring the image in dynamically. Let's see if that works. Flip over, and there's my image one brought in dynamically. Now all the other images are not, but I need to go back to each image and do the same thing. Okay, let me add the caption now, but I want to make a few points here. Uh, come along and take here. I've accidentally left the uh, embed image in there. And I'm bringing my assets thumbnail here. You don't want to embed there. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen. This is the way Flex works. Whatever occurs last is the top layer. So what actually happened in this program, it brought in the image dynamic, and then it laid this on top of it. So I can't tell what is what, because now I have double images. So let's go and get rid of that image right there. So we don't need that. I'm going to run my program again, just to make sure it works. So make sure you save. That's very important so the program can see it. Now, when you run Flex, it will save everything automatically anyway. But when you're doing the dynamic control click, you want to make sure you save. So let's go back to main and let's run the program. And let's see what happens. Cross your fingers. And when I flip over, do I get image one? Yes, I do. That is image one. That's actually the dragon being brought in. And that's what I want to see. So you can see what was happening in the first one. I was actually hiding that with what was layered on top. And now I'm actually getting the image brought in dynamically, and that is James's artwork. Hooray, hooray, hooray. All right, now let's go back. You need to do what I've just done for every single component to bring in the other ones. But let's come here and let's put in the caption. We're going to put a caption in right at the bottom, right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops, guys, I can see that we've run out of time. We've only got 10 minutes on each YouTube video, so we've actually run out of time here in Camtasia. So what we're going to do is we're going to come along here and do the caption in the next video. So thanks for listening. Uh, this was Mike Lively.